Speaking of weather and staying into that same tune, floods, tornadoes and hurricanes usually grab more attention, but damage from wind and hail are responsible for nearly half of all home insurance claims. Meteorologist Chase Kane met up with scientists to see how they're using your tax dollars to keep us safe in a storm. For millions of Americans, that sound might as well be a cash register because hail costs Americans 10 to 15 billion dollars every year. Oh my God. Once it grows to an inch or larger, it becomes especially destructive, shattering car windshields, flattening crops and turning roofs into Swiss cheese. I feel sorry for a lot of the homeowners in North Texas. I feel like uh, we just keep getting hit every year. In fact, nearly half of all home insurance claims are caused by wind and hail. And it's tricky for meteorologists to forecast because there hasn't been dedicated research into hail in nearly 50 years until now. Dozens of scientists just spent six weeks driving 14 specially rigged trucks into storms like this, scooping up more than 10,000 hailstones, positioning mobile radars and launching balloons into the wind to collect data, the real life inspiration for Hollywood. These sensors take scientific measurements. We have these instruments called hail sons. It's almost like from the movie Twister. If we can track that sensor with time, understand the exact path, the exact trajectory that a hailstone takes, and really at the end of the day, make better hail forecasts. Victor Gensini is one of the lead scientists on Ice Chip, and his team's goal is to better understand the details of exactly what inside a storm creates certain types and sizes of hail. So how does hail form? Well, if we imagine this ping pong ball is ice already forming a hailstone, and this hair dryer is going to be the strong winds rushing up from the surface into the storm, it's known as the updraft. The hail is going to be held up in the storm by the updraft, and it's going to get bounced around, sometimes chaotically, 20, even 50,000 feet in the air. And that hail is going to stay up there. It's going to keep getting bigger and bigger until the updraft just can't support the hail anymore, and then it falls to the surface. So if we are getting golf ball or baseball or even soccer ball size hail here at the surface, just imagine how strong those winds were up in the clouds. And that part has Gensini and other scientists concerned because their latest research shows that climate change will make updrafts even stronger, which could make the biggest, most destructive hail up to 75% larger, and an especially concerning statistic for farmers fearing for their fields. You can be in the end of the crop or you can see flattened to the ground all times. These two farmers were on their way to check their crops after hail the night before. Wow. The exact reason the ice chip team picked this part of eastern Montana. Before the storm, researchers Karen Kasiba and Josh Werman positioned the mobile radar here. It's called a cow, C-band on wheels, and it gives them a detailed look at the hail inside a storm. And equipment like that in places like this Let this person go through. Definitely gets attention. No, we were out here for the hail last night. I was like, because a couple miles that way is where the tornado touched down. I was like, oh my gosh, we're going to die. So everybody's really concerned about the weather. And being out in a lot of these areas that we're studying these hailstorms, there's a lot of agriculture that's going on. There are crops, machinery, getting stuff into shelter. So there's a lot of economic ties to the weather. And the ability to pay for research like this in the future is in doubt. The National Science Foundation funded this field work last fall, just before President Biden left office. Now, the Trump administration is slashing NSF funding by more than half. The White House telling NBC News in part that NOAA is committed to providing gold standard research and data for the American people. But all the scientists I talked to say that's impossible with such drastic cuts to the NSF, warning Americans' safety could be threatened. There's going to be no improvement in forecasts. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we suffer as a country because we don't invest in basic fundamental research. We hope that people see that there is a connection between this science back in the labs and what's affecting their community. In Montana, I'm meteorologist Chase Kane.